truth case, this is something known as a trivial connection. So we want to compute a discrete trivial connection. Of course, it's really important to make sure that our basis includes both contractible cycles and non-contractible cycles. Because if we just ask the holonomy to vanish around the contractible cycles, then we're not getting something with zero holonomy, we're just getting something with zero curvature. And this really isn't going to be enough to give us a consistent notion of parallel transport. In other words, we will end up with these jumps. So actually, let's take a look at what happens if we try to construct a vector field on the torus using several different connections. So if you use the levich vita connection, again, there's non-trivial holonomy all over the place, and these red lines indicate where our vector field jumps when we try to reconstruct it. If we make sure that holonomy vanishes around all the contractible cycles, the situation improves, but we still have problems whenever we walk around a handle of this torus. And finally, if we really make sure that around every loop holonomy vanishes, we get a path-independent notion of parallel transport, which means we can construct a nice, smooth vector field everywhere. Of course, it's never quite that easy. So uh, if we had a connection with zero holonomy everywhere, that would imply that we also had zero curvature everywhere. Unfortunately, the gauss bonnet theorem says that we have to have 2 pi times the Euler characteristic of curvature over our entire surface. So unless we're on a torus, uh, we're going to have to figure something else out. And the idea here is to say, OK, let's take this curvature and redistribute it over our surface in a way that doesn't interfere with parallel transport. In particular, we're going to concentrate the curvature at vertices in increments of 2 pi. And that's what we call a singularity. So now, if we walk a vector around a loop, it may experience some number of whole rotations, but when it gets back to the beginning, it still ends up where it started. So we do get this nice path-independent notion of parallel transport. OK, so now that we've established all the major concepts, what's our final algorithm? Well, for each loop on our basis, we know that we're going to find some change in angle if we transport a vector around using the levy civita connection. And that's written as b here. And we also have these angles x that tell us how much we should deviate from levy civita In other words, how much we should rotate after we move across each edge. So what we want to do is find a set of angles x that account for this deviation b. In other words, we want to find angles that effectively cancel the holonomy found using levy civita So we can write down one of these linear equations for each loop in our basis, and we end up with a sparse linear system Ax equals negative b, where the rows of A are basis cycles, and the entries of B give the holonomy from levy civita minus whatever curvature we put at the singularities. OK, so now we have a nice linear system that characterizes the consistency of parallel transport. Uh, but are we done at this point? Well, no. Actually, it turns out that this system is under constrained, so we have to decide which solution we want to use. And a natural thing to do is to look for the connection that's as close as possible to Levi Civita. In other words, the one that best agrees with our usual notion of straightness. Uh, fortunately, our angles x already encode the deviation from Levi Civita. So our energy is just going to be the norm of this vector of angles. Of course, we want to be careful here to use the right area weighting. So we're going to associate each dual edge with the blue diamond area pictured here, which we're going to put in a diagonal matrix D. And in fact, the entries of this matrix are given by just the usual uh, cotangent formula. So finally, we end up with an optimization problem that says, minimize the two norm of dx subject to ax equals negative b, or in other words, find the connection that's as close as possible to levi civita subject to the condition that parallel transport is path independent. So this problem is strongly convex, which means it has a unique global minimum. And at this point, we could use a standard algorithm like equality constrained Newton's method to find the solution. Uh, but actually, we can be a bit more clever here 
and apply a change of variables y equals dx. And now we just end up with a problem that says find the minimum two norm solution to an underconstrained linear system. And fortunately, this is something that's really easy to do using uh, an efficient linear, uh, iterative linear solver. Another thing that's nice about the system is that the specification of the singularities uh, only affects the right hand side. So if we want, we can prefactor our matrix and edit singularities very, very quickly. Okay, so just a few notes on implementation. Uh, although I won't go into much detail here, it turns out that for a genus zero surface, implementation is insanely easy because our matrix A is just a vertex edge incidence matrix and our right hand side B is just the usual discrete Gaussian curvature, so 2 pi minus the sum of tip angles minus whatever curvature we put at singularities. The general case isn't much harder. Uh, now we just need a basis for the non-contractible cycles, which we can get using the tree-co-tree decomposition of David Epstein. And again, here the hardest part is just you have to compute a spanning tree of the primal and dual edges of the mesh. And finally, we don't really need a very esoteric linear solver. Um, in fact, the backslash operator in the current version of MATLAB will give you a sparse QR factorization routine, which is perfect for this uh, algorithm. Okay, and now some results. So performance is really good. For instance, uh, we can edit singularities on this lion mesh of 400,000 faces in about a second on a standard laptop. And on this kitten of 20,000 faces, we can move singularities around in real time. And so this is about an order of magnitude faster than existing methods. As you might expect, performance scales linearly with the number of faces. And the method is really robust. So here we've added either uniform noise in the middle or really crazy non-uniform noise on the right. And as you can see, it doesn't really change the global behavior of the solution very much. We can also handle surfaces with boundary and directional constraints. Uh, there are more details about this stuff in the paper, but basically the story is that we just have to add additional linear constraints to our system, and we still get the same types of guarantees. We still just have to solve a single linear system. Okay, and finally I mentioned before that instead of working with vector fields, we might want to deal with something more general like cross fields. And so to do this, uh, all we have to do is instead of redistributing our curvature in multiples of 2 pi, we just re redistribute it in increments of 2 pi over n for some fixed integer n. And then we solve as usual. Nothing else changes. So here's an example of 2 pi over 3 and 2 pi over 4. And fields like this can be useful for something like quadrilateral remeshing. So here we've taken the output of our algorithm and plugged it into quad cover to get a nice uh, grid over the surface. Okay, so there's a demo of our algorithm on the web, which you can download and play around with, uh, which lets you load up meshes, click around, and add singularities, and then you can export this data into several nice human-readable formats. And just a few concluding remarks. So we set out to solve this problem of, given a set of singularities on a surface, find the smoothest vector field that has only those singularities. And this problem is really solved now. We have a nice simple algorithm with guarantees that takes just a single linear solve. Of course, we didn't say anything about where these singularities come from. In other words, we didn't try to find the best location for the singularities. And in a way, this question of best placement is somewhat ill-defined because it's very application dependent. So if I want to put fur on an animal, or if I want to do quad remeshing, I'm going to have very different criteria for where singularity should go. But this is definitely an interesting problem to think about. Um, overall, we're hopeful that the efficiency and simplicity of our algorithm will make it useful not only for vector field design, but for any application where you need to compare tangent directions on a surface. And for this reason, we're making several resources available on the web including the demo application I just mentioned, um, some nice pedagogical MATLAB code that helps you understand the details of the algorithm, and soon I'll put the C++ code from our demo executable online as well. Thanks for listening.